All right, and we are live. Welcome Door Grow Hackers to the Door Grow Show. If you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors, make a difference, increase revenue, help others, impact lives, and you are interested in growing your business and life, and you're open to doing things a bit differently, then you are a Door Grow Hacker. Door Grow Hackers love the opportunities, daily variety, unique challenges, and freedom that property management brings. Many in real estate think you're crazy for doing it. You think they're crazy for not because you realize that property management is the ultimate high trust gateway to real estate deals, relationships, and residual income. At DoorGrow, we are on a mission to transform property management businesses and their owners. We want to transform the industry, eliminate the BS, build awareness, change perception, expand the market, and help the best property management entrepreneurs win. I'm your host, property management growth hacker Jason Hull, the founder of Open Potion, Gather Kudos, Thunder Local, and of course, DoorGrow. Now let's get into the show. So today I'm hanging out here with Sean Miller, and we had some internet glitches, so this is a redo, but Sean is from uh, Point Central, and it, I'm really excited to share with my audience, Sean, like the stuff that you guys are doing over at Point Central, it sounds really cool. So tell us a little bit of background about you and how you got into working with Point Central and uh, getting involved in, in this stuff. Great. Well, Jason, thanks for uh, the time to be here. It's awesome. Um, so at a high level, I, I, I'm a geek. I've always been a geek. You know, I was the guy as a kid who got called over to hook up people's VCRs and uh, stereo systems. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate for the last almost 10 years of my career, I've been able to be involved in roles where technology is helping other industries. So um, if your listeners have ever heard of a company called Generac, about eight years ago, I started a connected device uh, product there. Uh, I then moved on to run Wemo, which was Belkin, Belkin's home automation division, and then joined Point Central because I really got excited of how Point Central had the opportunity to take home automation tech that is today realistically was DIY great. The software was DIY great. The hardware was DIY great. And what we've done is take that and build it into an enterprise platform that allows residential property managers to both run their businesses better and provide an amenity that their residents want. And so there's a lot of uh, home automation systems out there. There's a lot of like, this is kind of a thing right now. And it's, it's kind of the wild west trying to figure out which things to use and tools to use. Now, what really sets you guys apart is that you focus on residential property management. Is that correct? That is correct. So our, our software is designed for short and long-term, single-family and multifamily residential property managers. So we spent the past seven years understanding how those businesses work, really trying to understand, you know, where's their pain points in operations and how can we take this tech and refine it and develop the software in a way so that it's easy for property managers to deploy it and reliable, secure to help their businesses. Cool. So... Uh, so that's really unique. So now one of the concerns that I've noticed in, in the door grow club and in the property management space is that the, a lot of vendors, as they call them, like a lot of property management vendors will try to target the property management entrepreneurs and their businesses. And then they also try to go direct to consumer and they end up kind of undercutting them or competing against the property manager. And so they're having to juggle this price. Is that a concern at all with Point Central? Yeah, so we don't go direct to consumers, or in this case, direct to homeowners. Our whole business is working with property managers. So we try and you know, be at all the trade shows and all the events where we can meet property managers and work with them to understand our system and then deploy it. And how do we help them explain it to the home, to their, their owners and their residents? Um, one of the interesting things is you know, we're seeing homeowners are starting to ask their property managers about this tech or even sometimes just go out and buy it and install it themselves at a turn. And then suddenly the property managers go, wait, there's a nest in there. I can't control that. Like that, that doesn't help me. You've actually just introduced a, a bigger headache for me. Right? So there's this, we support only the property managers and we do it in a way where we help the property managers show the owner, you're going to get all the benefits that you want from this tech, but we're going to be able to do it in a way where it doesn't disrupt our daily business. And, and, and renters actually, want the tech. Is, right. I mean, everybody wants the tech. I mean, I love being able to just go on my phone right now if I'm uncomfortable and control my thermostat that's downstairs. I mean, that's nice. Yep, there's a lot of conveniences to it, but there's also a lot of operational benefits too. And a lot of the 
technology that's out there today focused on just the sh shiny bell. You know, renters will want this. This is cool. And, you know, you have owners go, wait, it's $250 for a thermostat? Do renters really want that? So what we've been able to build first was we built our system to make sure there was an operational benefit to the property manager and the owner. That's the base of the ROI. And then all the resident amenity just becomes gravy and helps produce a positive cash flow. So let's get into that. Let's talk about some of the operational benefits because I think that really is what sets you guys apart from going and just trying to DIY this stuff as a property management business owner. Great. So from an operational standpoint, uh, first and foremost, there's a couple products or categories that where we see good operational savings. First is when you think of locks. So our locks, you get to move from a key lock to a keyless lock. That helps on turn costs. You no longer have to be key locks now because codes are just changed you know, automatically remotely. Um, you also get better history of who is in the property, when they're in the property, for how long. So depending on how your relationship is with vendors, you can know that someone may have charged you for three hours of work. But when you look at the event history, you see they're only in a home for 45 minutes. You can either question, did they do the right job? And, or are they just overcharging for the job they're doing? Um, and then you can also do things like unattended showing. So whether you truly want to remove the property manager from being there during the showing, or you just want to supplement it because every property manager knows there's always the potential resident who says they'll be there at three and doesn't show up till 3.30 or, you know, cancels at 2.58. Now the property manager's wasted time driving to the property and waiting there. With unattended showing, they can say, let the person in on their own and then show up a little bit later on, or let the person do the first viewing completely on their own and then follow up with them to engage. How did you like the property? You know, what would you like to do next? So a lot of savings there. The other bucket that a lot of operational savings come is thermostats, HVAC. So our system knows when the property is vacant or occupied, the property manager, when they first configure the system, always tells it, I want vacant properties to say be 78. And our system will sit there and watch that and make sure it stays at 78. So whether a resident comes in and tries to change it, change it or a vendor as part of the turn tries to change it, the system will sit there and make sure the property stays at whatever temperature of the property manager set so it's cool comfortable but you're not say running the hvac at 65 degrees 24 7 while the property properties are not that and that typically saves uh, um, about 10 to 15 percent on monthly uh, hvac costs energy costs all right cool so uh, so what's the typical cost of getting a property rekeyed roughly if that's so being what we've heard is you know, rekeying a property cost between 100 to 150 dollars depending on your market and so okay. you know it, so, so they're reducing that. They're reducing ten to fifteen percent on on HVAC costs, especially right. you know during vacancy or, or uh, you know, or while vendors are working on stuff. And then, um, and then I love the idea of creating greater accountability for you know the vendors that are going in and out. You can see when they were in, when they were out, um, and so, and then just um, and then what about like the the risks of vacant properties? So, if you're talking about the risks of like people entering when they shouldn't be entering or yeah. you know, keys that get duplicated and float around. So great question. So yeah. there's some, you know, there's the one problem of take vendors or, you know, with codes, you can make sure that a vendor or even someone doing unattended showing has a code that only works in a specific set of time, whether that's a mm -hmm. one time use because they're doing an unattended showing, whether that's Monday through Friday, eight to five, because they're a vendor that or a maintenance guy that just does ongoing work for you or, uh, it's tied to a little bit longer point, but again, has a very definitive start and stop. That allows you to make sure the right person's in the right, only at the right times, and again, you get that full event history. The other thing we, we've seen, right, is there's data out there that says, unfortunately, rental homes have a higher burglary rate than owned homes, and that's because, you know, keys float. People, you know, can figure things out. Um, you know, they know if the house is unoccupied or not because the lights are always off. So there's this ability to now, using keyless, essentially, you know, have a more safe home because you eliminate all that risk of floating keys. You can also tie in, say, a light bulb or a light switch in an occupied home that will turn on and off at the sunset, turn off at sunrise. So it sort of simulates occupancy and, again, helps keep that asset a little more safe and secure, both when it's unoccupied as well as when it's occupied. Nice. So as far as, like, unattended showings, I think a lot of people listening um, – are, are wondering, how does this integrate with either property management software? Does it integrate with some of these 
um, companies that manage short, sort of the showing pre-application sort of process, like Tenant Turner and and Rently and you know some of these things. And so, uh, how do you guys integrate? Do you compete? Like, how how does that sort of how would they kind of piece this together as part of their workflow? Yeah. So, no, great question. Another great question. So, we look to integrate with. Um, PMS systems and some of these showing sites as much as we can. So, uh, you know, we have integrations with Propertyware. Uh, we're working on the one for Appfolio. We integrate with Tenant Turner. We integrate with ShowMojo. So, hey, we also have a very basic unattended showing just site on our own if someone's you know, syndicating their listings on their own. So, we try and be flexible at the end of the day. What we see that we do well is providing this safe and secure home automation platform. And then we look to partners to help augment that and integrate with it. Because we know at the end of the day, no property manager wants to have to log into three systems to do things. So the more we can integrate it and just make it seamless, the better it is. Yeah, I think some people listening just got really excited hearing that you connect and integrate. I mean, integration seems to be a big buzzword right now in the industry. So, um, so, so that's 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 pretty awesome. And um, now, in terms of reliability, like one of the concerns with these kind of systems are like what's required to be like in the property do they have to have some sort of internet connection internet router like how like it sounds like that that would be a pretty big point of failure yeah well we can talk we can speak to that from uh doing this show live we had some internet problems um so yeah wi-fi internet today broad, broadband internet to the home is great for streaming netflix and stuff but the reality is it's still spotty right we, we stream netflix and you see it pixelate or drop things um, and that's fine when you're streaming video but what we found is Murphy's law that's exactly when you're sending a code to the lock or a thermostat control will be when the internet drops so our system is cellular based um, that cellular base gives us uh, pretty much the 99.9% .9 uptime reliability that the cellular networks have um, it also allows us to provide a more secure solution so all the devices in the home talk to our cellular hub we we encrypt that that conversation using the same level of encryption that actually the NSA and banks use to encrypt data. Uh, then we encrypt it again from the hub to our cloud. The data from the hub to the cloud is on cellular, so cellular is less porous than Wi-Fi also. We can download an app today and hack into a Wi-Fi network pretty easily. Cellular is not that easy to do. Um, and we collectively with our parent company, Alarm.com, we have 5 million homes that run on our collective platform. So with that scale, we're able to buy a private line on AT&T and a private line on Verizon. So A, we have a line with each of the carriers, so it can give that coverage and that ability to serve every customer, but it's only our data going back and forth on those cellular lines. So it can add another layer of security to make sure that the data is only being going to us and only therefore being read by the people we want it to. That's awesome. So you have Verizon and at and Now, what if the signal is kind of weak in their market for both? So the good news is what the amount of signal you need to say to a voice call is higher than what we need. So in any market, people sometimes say, I only have one bar. One bar is fine for us. We can send the data we need back and forth on one bar. But because we have both networks also, when the customer comes on board with us, one of the things we do in the onboarding process is ask for the addresses, and we go and check the coverage in that area. So when we send out the hardware, if we see AT&T is miles above Verizon, we'll send AT&T. If it's vice versa, we'll send Verizon. If both are good, then we'll mix them so that, you know, you don't necessarily have two things right next to one another. Um, just gives you redundancy. Awesome. Love it. So, so with, with being connected to alarm.com, I think that, I mean, I think that's a pretty great selling point. So explain how alarm.com plays into, you know, being a subsidiary of alarm.com plays into point central. How, how does yeah. that, uh, how does that, how does, how does that relationship work? And what is, what's yeah, the benefit so, of that? So we're a wholly owned subsidiary of alarm.com. So what that means is, you know, we're able to tap into some of the strengths that the mothership has while again, designing this system that's different than what alarm's core business was, which was security and home automation systems for owner occupied homes. So what that gives us is that architecture, that's robust, that's been out there for 15 years and been continually developed and refined. You know, our platform is based on that same architecture so that our customers get, again, that reliability and that robustness. We talked about cellular. So again, that overall scale that we're able to provide a cellular network that's secure and reliable is only possible because we have the greater scale of a larger entity. 
Um, it also helps us make sure that we're, we're treating things, data, with the right um, policies. You know, we have a robust po privacy policy we list online. We can show people how our data centers are encrypted and protected. Um, so it really helps on a lot of that security and reliability. It also helps us show that our property management partners that we're a partner to them, that we'll be here six or 12 months from now. You mentioned, Jason, at the beginning of this, that home automation is really becoming sort of a hot, sexy space right now. There's a lot of people jumping into it. The reality is most startups fail. And, and you know, property managers look at that, and even if they believe everything they're saying, the reality is, will you be here in six or 12 months? Um, we can show someone that you know we're, we're part of a publicly listed entity that continues to invest in us and invest in the space, and we continue to refine our product, and that we'll be here for them. Uh, down the road. So, um, so tell us a little bit about some of the, because you guys are collecting a lot of data, I would imagine, because you have access to this. How are you able to leverage that? And then what are there security issues? So I think one of the big things people are thinking about is like liability with tenants. Like if you're seeing their video doorbells and you can see when people are coming and going, how, like that might raise some privacy red flags or concerns among the renters. And so maybe you could touch on that a little bit too. Yeah. Um, so a couple things in there. First and foremost, a lot of that system architecture helps us provide a secu secure experience and also that we put ourselves forward in protecting that data. But I think one of the core things of data privacy is what happens to the data. At the end of the day, we're in, our system has a recurring fee to it. That's how we make money. Um, there are other um, large entities coming in the space like Amazon or Google. At the end of the day, their business model is to collect data and sell it. Um, We've been pretty open with people. That's not what we're looking to do. We want to collect the data. We want to analyze it. We want to provide valuable information to our property managers in a secure and private way. But we're not looking to sell your, your, your that resident data to other people looking to monetize it. So I think that's that's one uh, core policy. Um, you know, again, from a privacy standpoint, besides all the things like the app and the website and two-factor authentication and how we protect people's logins, we also, at the end of the day, we just look to make sure that we um, you know, do the right thing and only provide the right information to people when it's appropriate and, and you know, not overstep our bounds or we won't work to do anything too aggressive. Um, but we, we respect that. We know at the end of the day that property managers being entrusted by the, both the resident and the homeowner, and we respect that and look to make sure we're enabling them but not giving them any unneeded hot water because, you know, we're struggling to do something and are struggling to make ends meet. So we're looking for different ways to monetize it. We, we think we can protect and respect that, that privacy need. And also, sorry, the, the system. One thing about our system is, again, it knows when things are changing state. So our, we've already pre-programmed the hardware to know a video doorbell, when it's unoccupied, the property manager has access to. But as soon as it becomes occupied, that goes away because that just gets property managers into a lot of trouble. Right. Same so you're with, preventing the property the, managers from hurting themselves and like digging where they yeah. should. Whether okay. intentionally or unintentional, right? You don't want to suddenly get a video clip of something maybe you shouldn't see. Um, same thing with thermostats. Once it's occupied, property manager probably shouldn't be changed with that, that temp. A lock, on the other hand, we still allow the property manager to create access codes when it's occupied, but it will now drive notifications to the resident because even in today's world, the property manager can get into a home, they have a copy of the key. So you still want to respect that access or that potential need for access, but it's done in a different way and it balances the resident's needs with the property manager's needs. Yeah, love it. So, um, so tell us about like what's done with all this data. Is there a benefit to all the data that you're capturing for the property managers? Yeah. So you asked earlier, Jason, about integration. So one of the reasons we also value integrations is with our partners, they've also seen what they do well. And the reality is, if all we are doing is connecting device A to hub B, some of our partners could do that, right? But you add in the security, you add in the reliability, that adds value. That's what, part of what makes us. You add in that sort of system architecture and knowledge in the property management space, um, that, that, that's some value. But then we're also, we're able to collectively go is, Last year, we analyzed 20 billion data points on what was happening in these homes. And we're looking to use that data again to how do we help a property manager do their job better? So the first way we've deployed some of that analysis is in HVAC. So today, if a property manager gets a call from a resident and says, hey, I'm trying to cool the house, it's not cooling. Historically, that meant a property manager probably had to go out to the property or have an HVAC technician go out to the property. Today, they can log into our system and look and see 
what the set point is and how the system's performing. And without having to be a tech themselves to say, do I see a nice smooth line of you know, temperature decreasing or do I see a jagged line that tells me that the system's not performing correctly? Then they know what to send an HVAC tech out. They can even send that chart to the HVAC tech if they want, so the tech gets an idea of what are they going out, what problems may they potentially see to make sure the right tech goes out. Um, we've also, on top of just that data set, been now rolling out some predictive notifications. So take, for example, Phoenix. We have 30,000 homes in Phoenix. We'll say, look, it's summertime. On average, it takes a home in Phoenix two hours to cool four degrees. We can now notice if one home suddenly starts to take six hours. The good news is the resident probably hasn't even noticed that yet. But we can tell the property manager that we noticed something. They can get that data to their tech and find an opportunity to go to service that equipment at a very low cost point, right? Because now you can schedule it when the tech's not busy. You can schedule it when it's convenient for the resident. You don't have a resident screaming at you and you know, looking for concessions or putting a bad review of your company on Yelp or something like that. So it just makes the whole process more um, efficient on how to service it. And then we'll continue to look at ways of how do we bring value of analytics to this. So there's areas like water or, you know, sensing how much water is being used and knowing if that's a normal use or a drippy faucet, um, video. There's a lot of different applications that we're looking to deploy our selective brain power into. Awesome. So, um, so this brought up a question. So have, have you guys, do you guys uh, compete with, or do you guys think you could integrate with somebody like property meld who does the text message and, and coordination for maintenance? Good, good question. We actually do integrate with property meld. That's so, amazing. Uh, someone using okay. property meld to do their processes, right? Would essentially have an ability to, for our locks to help augment that data. So when did someone actually enter, make sure they got an access code, make sure it's being used by them, et cetera. Right. That's so uh, cool. Right okay. Yeah, yeah. So he's our platinum sponsor for Door Grow Live for 2018. So, so we're, awesome. we're excited about him. So the um, and I've heard really positive feedback about about their system as well. So, um, so you've got like HVAC analytics. You've got these predictive features for like cooling and, and different things. You've got um, the video doorbells, maybe even light switches, and I think even maybe water sensors and like all these different things. Can, could be connected into this thing. So, um, so what's the onboarding process like? How long does that typically take to get a property set up with this? And uh, what's the typical cost per property and, and how can the property manager offset that? Yeah, so uh, onboarding typically is once someone decides to go forward with us, you actually get handed off from the sales team to we have a dedicated project management team. That team works with the property manager uh, on their schedule to sort of teach them the system, uh, teach them how to install the product, or if they want to use one of our nationwide contractors to, to do that, um, and, and hold them through that, and then sort of graduate them into using the system on their own. When a property manager has a question, whether it's during that installation or and learning process, they can always call the project manager, but also during that time, and even once they've graduated, we have a U.S.-based support team in Minneapolis that's a dedicated team that a property manager can call into, say, just with a simple question. Maybe they, they knew how to do something originally, and they just sort of forgot how to do it, and they, we have a bunch of resources online, but let's just say they need a quick answer. They call this team. They get someone in Minneapolis who, uh, besides potentially being a Vikings fan or a Packers fan, uh, are pretty good people and, uh, you know, will help them answer a question in a relatively short amount of time. And so I'm a okay. Bears fan, Jason, so I had to, I had to throw <laughs> the, the jab against uh, – my coworkers who are in the in the north, yeah, but they, you, you know, we you have to do sort that. of really help. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. Um, you know, that team we we do see ourselves as partners and not vendors. So we're not just looking to make the initial sale. We're looking to make sure people get onboarded with it and are successful. And then once they're on board, keep them successful. So that core team helps keep them successful. We have another team um, called Customer Advocacy, where all they do is run webinars to show people new features. So like that HVAC analytics, you know, how do we do webinars and show people how do they get value out of this so that they continue to see the system. Uh, installation, you asked about, you know, cost to install. So installation, if you do it yourself, if you have a maintenance guy, it should only take 20 to 25 minutes. The thermostat replaces the standard thermostat. The doorbell replaces the standard doorbell. The hub plugs into a wall and you can, you know, mount it to a wall and it just goes in a coat closet or say above a microwave. And, uh, 
that's pretty easy. If you had to pay an outside party, there's a nominal fee of a uh, the outside guys typically cost about 125 to 150 dollars per market. So, so they can offload so this. They could offload that if their maintenance guy's not able to get to it. Yeah, if you have a swamp maintenance person, this outside team can easily get into a market and do it for you. Okay, great. So, um, cool. So, what's the uh, what's the investment per property to get this system up and running then? So. Typical hardware, we'll call it base package, is our cellular hub, our thermostat, and our lock. That's going to cost someone about $550. Um, once that's been, and that's, if you look at the lock or you look at the cost of the thermostat, that's market competitive. I actually, I mean, our thermostat mm -hmm. retails for about $150. So it's less than other connected thermostats, but we feel that's competitive from a hardware standpoint. And then there's a monthly recurring fee of about $12 to $15, depending on the property manager size, that they can. They'll pay that every month going on, but that covers all the cellular connectivity, all of the apps, um, all the integrations, and, you know, everything. We don't have tiers. You know, we simply say, look, this is everything you need right here. And you know, whether you have two devices in the home or 30, everything connect to it, and we'll make sure we cover all the data back, back and forth and provide that value to the property manager for that. Okay, cool. So the property manager could potentially charge a fee for having a connected home, also put language in their lease to preclude them from screwing with any of that, like installing their own Nest thermostat that they're going to leave and you're not going to know how to get into or any of those potential challenges. So they can turn this into uh, maybe even a profit center or at least offset the cost of this happening. And then the typical cost yeah. of, a, of, of getting rekeys done is a costing that they can, you know, that they'll be offsetting and, and there's additional costs and benefits. So I would imagine in the end, they're able to have all these benefits, have a more connected home, lower their internal operational costs, make sure vendors can get in and out more easily, increase um, the, the, the level of security and safety of the property, decrease liability, and they're going to be able to basically create a system that pays for itself, it sounds like. Yeah, you're hitting on a good point. So one thing, once property managers get into this, they start to understand the operational benefits. They have those pain points, right? They, they understand the pain points of keys and thermostats, et cetera. One thing then you know, they may forget sight of is this technology actually is in demand by the residents. So about a third of U.S. households today have some form of home automation tech in it, but that's the average. If you look at rented properties, it's, it's a lot lower because for a renter, it's difficult to get this tech. A, the tech is sort of expensive when you think about the $500 for a, a lock and a thermostat. Um, there's questions about how they would install it. There's questions about how they get all the apps and configure it. Who do they call for support? Plus, what's the landlord going to think? What's the property manager going to say? What's the owner going to say? So they've just avoided it. But the reality is there's this pent-up demand. What we've seen, the property managers who have this system, that core system of a hub and a thermostat and a lock, will typically be offered to the resident at a $20 a month price point. And we see north of 50% adoption. So I don't want to disclose just you know, everyone's adoption, but I can tell you it's significantly north of 50. And what that creates is essentially a positive cash flow on the recurring every month from that system. Nice. You marry that with those turn cost savings. Most of the hardware's paid usually in that first turn savings. By the second turn, it's all paid off and everything's just gravy at this point. It's just incremental fees. And we've even found some property managers have gotten creative. They've seen residents stay in the house longer because they have this feature. It helps them make it feel like a home. Um, they've also been able to be creative. So knowing that the residents like this, instead of maybe having to offer a concession, uh, a dollar concession at, at when someone's lease is up, they can go to them and say, hey, guess what? How about I install a connected light switch for you? Or I give you a, a Google Home or, you know, things to augment and uh, help them even get more value out of the system, which again, keeps them attached to that home longer. Yeah, so it's going to increase tenant retention. It's going to decrease turnover in the properties, which is going to lower a lot of operational costs. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that go into turnover. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's lots of benefits. So, so... Um, Sean, tell everybody how they can get connected to Point Central and what's sort of the next step that you'd love people to take that are listening to this. Yeah, so the easiest way to get connected to us is to go to our website, pointcentral.com. Um, and I ask people, we have a few videos on there, we have some you know, testimonial white papers, et cetera. I'd ask them, go learn a little bit about what we do, get comfortable. 
And when they're ready to have a conversation, there's an easy way to either call us or fill out a form and we'll call you. And as part of that process, if we can provide references to people of you know, who's using our systems. I can tell you we have property management customers as small as two homes that use our system, and we have customers that own over 80,000 homes that use our system. So you know, we think we've designed a system that's robust and scalable, but is providing value to everyone, no matter how they run their business, how they do it, that it's flexible enough to fit their needs. Sean, this is awesome, and it sounds really exciting. We're excited to see um, how things progress for, for, this, for, for Point Central, so keep us posted. And, um, and shameless plug, hopefully we'll be seeing you at Door Grow Live as one of our vendors, so we can chat about that later. And uh, thanks for so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, I look forward to engaging with you guys uh, live, and uh, I appreciate being here. So thank you, Jason. Awesome. All right. So everybody heard, heard Sean here. We appreciate him coming out. Check out point, pointcentral.com and, and check it out. I mean, it sounds really cool that it's integrating with all these different things. So if you are a property management entrepreneur, you are interested or curious about, you know, the best practices in the industry, you want to connect with other property management entrepreneurs, make sure you get inside our Facebook group, the Door Grow Club. You can get to that by going to doorgrowclub.com. If you want to have a conversation our mission is to take, we want to take struggling property management entrepreneurs that are the best in the industry, that care about owners and tenants, and we want to help you win and take you out of that mode of struggle, and we're really great at doing that. So check us out at doorgrow.com and have a conversation with my sales team, and let's see if we can get you out of what we call the cycle of suck, and so which is property management hell. So I'm Jason Hall with DoorGrow here on the DoorGrow Show. And thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like um, uh, and subscribe to us in iTunes and leave us, leave us a testimonial. We read those. Um, we, we look at those. And uh, we want to see that we're adding some value to the space we're obviously not getting paid to just do podcasts all the time. And so uh, share, share testimonial or share your review of us. We want to hear your feedback, what you like and uh, what you're enjoying. And um, we would really appreciate that. That would mean make the world to me and my team. And that's it, everybody. Bye everyone.